and welcome. I'm Xander, and here we are playing modded Minecraft once again. And, uh, first of all, first thing I want to do here is... Oh, as you can see, I expanded the smeltery. I put the lava in it, which is nice being able to look at that and see how much lava's in it. And I put a hopper here for automatic application of stuff, which, in this case, I'm going to put in raw aluminum, obsidian, and iron ingots. Or the... Okay, the obsidian is in there. Uh, and, while that's going on, why isn't the aluminum melting? Hmm. Interesting. But anyhow, here's what I'm trying to make. You can see on the bottom, the pink one, alumite is made from aluminum, iron, and obsidian. And I wish to make it, but... Uh, it didn't look like my aluminum was melting, which could be a slight problem. But uh, I want to make a better pick. And before I go upstairs, I should probably mention that I got grass in here so I can spawn cows. Hooray! Uh, which I had them wired up differently. I just, you might be able to see it through there. But I decided to remove Thalmcraft. So the top of the house looks very similar to the bottom. Uh, ignore this, we'll be getting to this soon. And I was curious as to what would happen. I backed up the world beforehand. I ended up with some floating mushrooms where they were on trees. And some other things like that. Floating cobwebs over there, but those were there. Ooh. Hooray! Ender pearl. Hooray! So, this converted into a plains biome, as you can see there. Which I am quite pleased about. That's fine. It's better than other options. Uh, basically, I decided that Thalmcraft didn't really suit what I was doing anymore. So, I decided to get rid of it. As you can see, all that's left in here is the Efficiency 4 book I found. And, like I said, ignore that. We'll get to that shortly. Is the aluminum melting? Why is it not melting? Hmm. I should have a few ores left. Although I could probably just melt down a block. Hmm. It'll probably be simpler to just grab three ore. So, that said, I want to make an alumite pick. However, I don't want to make the entire pick out of alumite because that's a bit overkill. So, assuming this works this simply, go, netherrack tool rod, and a netherrack binding. When it gets low in durability, this will give it stone bound. The binding is just because, well, first of all, I don't really care about the pick, so I went with one of the cheapest resources I could come up with. And... Elemite. Now, oop, don't do that. Now, technically, if I bring this out, it should put the alumite in it and not the aluminum. Hooray! How much? Oh. I ended up with more alumite than I expected from this. And I'm going to end up with some extra aluminum, which is going to end up in... It's going to end up as a different form of aluminum from, in this case, the engineer's toolbox or... He measures resource, it's a requirement thing. Don't ask why I have the other smelting patterns there, I'm not entirely sure. That wasn't my brightest idea. So, that's going to leave us with some different little things there. Let's assemble this bad boy. Let's pick mode so it's easier to see where things go. And, as you can see, it says mining level cobalt. Which is the important part of this whole thing. I don't plan to put any upgrades on it, because I want to be able to get cobalt and whatnot. Uh, let's just sleep through the day, or through the night rather, not through the day. And we'll proceed on to the next order of business. Uh, eventually, I kind of want to think of something else we can do, but there's not too many blocks I can really cut at the moment. But the next order of business requires... Nine of these. Like... So, it makes an XP drain. So what I can do is I'll put this on a tank. I don't know if it works with this kind of tank. Oh, there it goes. And as you can see, there is XP in there. 
I don't... Says... Yeah, I was worried about that. Uh, you know what? We'll worry about that later. There is... It's right here. The auto enchantment table. Apparently it's made from three redstone, five iron, and an enchanting table. So, let's grab that. And that. Let's set this up. This is more or less exactly what it sounds. Uh, the cyclic assembler I put there for a good reason. You can set levels and then I'm assuming, yeah, it says auto eject, so I should be able to just put a chest next to it. Do I have one? Hmm. Not at the moment. Okay, let's make one. Uh, let's put this ender pearl in here before I lose it. Now, this should be able to go the whole way to 30. Uh, auto eject. Why? Oh, okay. Auto ext. Oh, right. Auto eject. Based on its current facing, eject to here. That should work. Uh, as for auto extract, actually, it shouldn't need to auto extract. I should be able to feed in from the bottom. And auto drink as if the tank was next to it, which I don't know if it could actually do that. Uh, the point here is, though, I can drop my XP in there by standing on this grate. And as you can see, there's currently 4,740, which I believe it's the same as Minecraft. Like one millibucket would be equivalent to one point of experience. I think. Does this work? Now, the internal buffer of this... Yeah, it filled up. Very good. Okay, so... Now I have a way to just drop my XP. And once I get the reeds grown for that... Which is harder than it should be, for some reason... I should be able to... Do I have a piece of leather? Yes. I should be able to feed leather and paper into here. I'll have to make the paper myself. And it should be able to make me books with three paper and a leather. And then it should be able to auto-eject it up. But that's kind of a different story at the moment. I don't know if it's actually going to need a liquid. I don't think this is really necessary unless you're using water buckets in here. But this should be able to auto-eject, but uh, that's pretty much the extent of that at the moment. So, hmm, I got those things out of the way quick. Uh, I suppose I'm going to put this in here, and anything else important to me in any way, shape, or form. I don't really need those at the moment. And perhaps we will go try to find some cobalt and ardite. Because I want, kind of want to upgrade my pick. Just a little. Oh. And in we go. Oh. Finding cobalt and ardite isn't the problem. It's getting to it in most cases. Because it could be in a lot of precarious and hard to get to locations. But I kind of really want it right now. But I don't see that happening. Hmm. Because, like, right there's some Ardite. But I don't know how I'd get to it. I think I'm just going to hold off on this for the moment. Go back through. Maybe we'll work on something a little bit different. I haven't quite figured out what the different thing is yet. I kind of want a mining machine of some kind, but I'm not sure what to do. I don't really want to make a buildcraft quarry, because I've been trying to stay away from buildcraft as much as I can. Uh, but there's not too much I can really do to avoid that. Because in terms of mining machines, there's the buildcraft quarry, I did some experimenting in a test world with Thermal Expansion's Terrain Smashers and uh, Redstone in Motion, and I kept on getting a crash when the item ducks were involved, plus it can be a bit of a 
pain to deal with that in the first place. Which leaves me with basically the uh, Engineer's Toolbox Husher Pressurizer Slick Water System. Which requires more power output than I'm currently doing. Now let's go to Engineer's Toolbox. And the setup for it is a pain. Because you have to make the husher, which takes all that stuff. Well, at least I have an easy solution to that. Then you also have to make a mixer, because you need to use the mixer to make slick water if you want to mine anything below level 32. And you need to make the pressurizer if you want to be able to mine your way through obsidian. Which... I guess isn't really necessary. Although it's not terribly hard to make. So then you have to make all kinds of inputs and outputs. You have to have two modular sockets, which the modular sockets themselves aren't too hard to make. Neither are the chassis. But when you actually get to making the blank modules... Yeah, my ever-plaguing problem of no blue dye. So we're going to avoid that at the moment. And instead we're going to look through uses of... See, I kind of want to go with this at some point, but I can't make this because I need lapis. So we're looking through possible uses of glowstone. to make some lights, which would be interesting. It's used in quite a few engineers' toolbox stuff, as you can see. Uh... I do kind of make some wireless redstone stuff, but I'm not sure I'm going to make use of that yet. Applied Energistics, which will be a long time probably before we get to that. I'm trying to avoid it right off, partly because large networks t tend to get more expensive than the stuff you're working with can really support. Hmm. I suppose, in terms of uses, all this really leaves me with is... Wait, what? Oh, I see. Interesting concept there. But uh, if you take energized glowstone, you can make glowstone illuminators, which are basically just like redstone lamps, or the impulse item ducts. And then, of course, energized glowstone bucket, which is basically just a liquid you can put somewhere. It generates light and floats to the ceiling. Be an interesting source of lighting, for sure. But, hmm, I suppose I'm not quite as planned out as I want to be. I kind of want to get the slick water stuff ready, but it's not really going to be too terribly easy. With the primary issue being, I'm not sure how I'm going to go about, I know how to make, uh, I know how I can uh, deal with making stuff. Highly descriptive, I know. Uh, for now, I think I'm going to grab eight of this and just, you know, screw up the whole stack. And I'm going to deal with my power system. Because as it currently stands, I'm not happy. I I'm only not happy because of one real reason. Which is, well, actually two reasons. Where it's located and the fact that, well, how it's set up and the fact of, uh, it's low power. So, if we go over here, leads. Oh, we're still on Engineer's Toolbox. My bad. Leadstone Energy Conduit Net. We want to. What do you make out of that? We want to make this. Did I miss something? Uh. It's not lead, it's Invar. So. That's even more better, actually. Uh, you know, I'm already up here. We'll use this one. Uh, I can do that to do the rate it goes as. So three crafts. This is going to burn through my supply of Invar pretty quickly, but I'm honestly not too concerned in that aspect. Oh yeah, shiny. So, there is going to be a power limit going upwards, but other than that, there shouldn't really be an issue. If 
hopefully. This is not helping the organization of things at all, I'm aware. Hmm. Well, that's no good. My solution to this will be... Well, that's not working as intended. There we go. Stop what you're doing. I'm going to do another set of upgrades, obviously. So... There we go. Because I didn't want to make it out of nuggets and whatnot. I wanted to use full bars where available. Well, doesn't that just look interesting? There. Although, I didn't really need to convert that last one because I'm going to move on to my next plan. Which is to make a leadstone energy cell, which... Oh. Hmm. I suppose we have to make one of those. Which takes Invar, so I'm kind of glad I made that. Uh, speaking of which... That is an induction smelter. So, two copper, reception coil, and a bucket. Uh, oop, take one of these buckets. That and that. Bing. Oop. I wish you could. it was shapeless, because shapeless would be helpful. What? Oh. So you're going, what did I do wrong? I'm an idiot. I'm still an idiot. But as for the reason behind the invar... Ah, what did I do wrong? That's what I did wrong. As for the logic behind the, uh, the invar and... I was originally planning to use the Invar to make Terrain Smashers, because it requires Invar picks. However, I eventually decided against it. With the... Part of the reason being that I couldn't really come up with a decent way to use it. I'll probably find a way at some point, but the only real thing I managed to come up with is a strategy I'd not rather go with. Uh, reason being, let's just make 20. Uh, reason being, it would take a lot of ender chests. Because basically it would be an ender chest, all of the same color of course, for each terrain smasher. And then I would pull out of it on the other side. And I'd rather not go that route. Now, I'm pretty sure... Then in order to make a leadstone energy cell, yes, for lead and thingy, uh, three copper, bing, bing, I realize this is the wrong way, but it still worked, okay, I need a block of redstone, I'm pretty sure that I needed glass, and I realized I just made a block of redstone, and then I made it. There we go. Bing, 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 bing. Hey, there we go. And glass. It's an energy still frame. It was there. Let's go there. Bam. However, while I'm on this, I might as well one up it with some Invar, because why not? So, for Invar, around the leadstone makes the hardened one, which is. The equivalent of the new pipes I just installed. So, I will put this... I'm honestly not entirely sure where I want to put it. Because I don't even have a plan for how I want to set up my power at the moment. I think... I will put it... Well... Part of the problem... But this whole thing originates from where my engines are and how you'd have to go about actually powering these. So... Hmm... 
Well, crap. What's even more ridiculous is that by the time you're getting ready to move into those, you could very easily move into the next stage of power. Uh, let me just show you. Energy cell. Oh, speaking of which, flux capacitor. Oh, hey, sulfur's used in that. Two lead copper. Uh, have sulfur downstairs. That is probably more than enough, isn't it? Yes. Okay. I got sulfur as a byproduct of... What was it? No. No. That. That's where I got it from. So, I want to make a capacitor because I think... Not that. This is going to be my easiest and simplest solution... Actually, I just realized there's probably nothing easy or simple about this, because now I need a cyclic assembler, which can hold stupid amounts of power. Not cyclic assembler. Uh, energy infuser. No. Infuser. There we go. Energetic infuser. Close enough. Electrum gear. Bing, 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 bing. Bing. Done. The other two are silver, one gold, then that, 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 that. One, two, three, four, or eleven, close enough. I'm glad I grabbed that extra copper from the other one, not a redstone. The, the copper from when I was making the other thing. Because if I hadn't have done that, I would not have enough copper on me right now. This thing will take stupid amounts of power. It holds, I think, 400,000 itself. Which is just absolute insanity. Uh, energy storage max of 400,000. Each one of these have an internal storage of 40,000. And this holds eighty thousand, but you can only take it can only take uh, twenty RF per tick. So, yeah, uh, these should start. Oh, no, not you. No, the engine. Forty, forty. This is only using twenty, but it, it's probably receiving more than that, unless the tree farm just did something, which. I got these boilers pretty filled up now. Uh, it says, I don't know how true this is, but it says 4,051 ticks, which is, well, I don't think it's right. Because, first of all, if you divide it by 20, so you take off at the end, and you get 200. I don't know if each one's actually lasting three minutes or not. That's debatable. Uh, I see. Hmm. These are all such easy upgrades. Except for that. I'd rather not do that. And then this is just getting insane. Uh, what was I doing? I was looking at elect uses for Electrum. A redstone energy cell frame. Redstone energy conduits. Which then I need hardened glass. Which means I need to pulverize obsidian, which is already a pain to get. Uh, how are things going over here? This is going to burn through a bunch of uh, charcoal from this, but I'm not terribly concerned. I do want to make impulse item ducks. Because, at least specifically for down on the bottom. Because none of these really should need to do anything, so for this takes the bucket. But that's empty bucket. Now, say I want to make... Well, I need to make a magma crucible if I want to do that. Which is also fun. Uh, I didn't grab any nether bricks, I don't think. 
Uh, let's see if I have any. Nothing. Nothing. Oh, another bricks. Cool. Gold, gold. Uh, four iron. Two redstone. A bucket. Boom, 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 boom. I've made these things before. Oh, I forgot the copper. I made these things on the previous Let's Play, so I probably shouldn't really be showing them, but meh. It's too late. I've already started. Where? I have a real, like, machine organizational problem right now. Uh. This is a bit of a waste of power. I want to output to that side. Oh, this is the magma crucible. Okay, magma crucible will go here. We will output to that side. Currently no imports. Take the induction smelter and place him here. You will accept inputs from nowhere so I can better see where you're outputting so you output into that chest then these guys will all come down here like so this and it should connect up just fine there we go that's better however they're being slow to receive power partly because this can hold 400,000 as well uh, this is almost full though. This is full. So this should solve matters by putting this in here. There we go. That only uses 10 per tick and it holds 24,000. So it should be able to do roughly 2,400 combines. So let's just grab some of this. Uh, we'll put two of them in here. Grab a leather. I want to see if this works. Also, it's been a bit rambly, and I've been kind of hastened and whatnot, but we're getting kind of close to... Oh. Whoops. Kind of close to... Out of time. Let's try this again. This time I won't make the book myself. I should be able to put paper in here. And leather. And I got a book output. Uh, let's try setting this up to auto extract from the bottom. No. That is not at all what I want you to do. I'm going to have to keep a supply of books in here to make sure it doesn't try and eat my schematic. But other than that, this should work just fine. Yeah. Okay. Oop, got a piece of lead. More bars to store in here. Hooray. So, between this episode and next episode, I'll see what I can do about acquiring some cobalt and ardite. Maybe do some mining, see if I can't find some more lapis. Although I don't think I would add it onto this pick, I would save it for the one I plan to make. Actually... You know what we can do? Here's an idea. Oh no, a diamond pick! It's such a waste! Seven... Seven... Uh, one... Chest... If you know what I'm making yet... You're doing good. Bing... Bing... Bing. I'm sure you know what I'm making now. Turtle. Diamond. Mining turtle. And as per usual, they will set Loki. Hooray, Loki! Good. Good. Now if I go down here, these machines won't care too much if I jack some car charcoal, I'm sure. Uh, it's not going to be a whole lot. But 5,040 moves 
should be well enough. Uh... I do kind of want to expand the tree farm a tiny bit. Although I'd have to make more pipes for that. It, it's actually kind of rather simple to do it. And I should probably change the saplings I'm using. Well, I don't want to get apples. Ah, too bad. Basically, my current problem is I now have more plastic than I know what to do with. So what I'm going to do... This will only accept vanilla saplings, unfortunately, because of how it's built. Uh, other mods have to actually properly implement themselves into it, and a lot of them don't. Do this to make sure it doesn't do anything silly. Okay. Now, I can make another fuel source, although I have no idea whether or not it will be accepted by thermal expansion. I'll probably go test that in a test world to have a check and see on that. Put these in here. And I'll use the turtle to go mining for me, basically. That'll be my solution to a mining machine as it currently stands. Uh, I'll probably take it to Y16. I think it's Y. Yeah, Y16. And then just set it to mine in an excavate format. So... I'll probably have to give it more fuel. Before then. But there's plenty of ways I can really support that. So I'm not going to worry too much. I do, however... It, let me just show you. Inside of here, I've got all of this raw rubber. Which I keep on throwing into here and double processing. After of which, once that gets processed, I then make it into the plastic sheets. And as you can see, I've got 16 and a half stacks. So, I'm doing good on that. I should probably do something about the leaf roof, because when it rains, the water drips through, and it's kind of annoying. But, other than that, I think this is about good for now. The magma crucible is going to have to wait for now, because I don't really want to do anything that requires it at this current moment. I may or may not inc add more steam dynamos. And I'm going to make an upgrade to show you how it works. Now, with Mine Factory Reloaded, a lot of it's, or at least the machines I'm using, that's modular power suits, you can upgrade the machines to give them larger radiuses using the upgrades here. And some of these are far simpler than others, like this upgrade would be so easy to make. And all I need to do is make two of them. One for the harvester, one for the planter. And as you can see, it is stupid easy to make. All I need is four redstone, two gold nuggets, six silver... I don't believe... Oh, there's a little bit of plastic here. Honey, give me a rubber sheet. Oops. Missed. Getting to be a slight bit long. I'm over 30 minutes now, I'm pretty sure of it. But I want to get this out of the way so I can show you. In the case of this, I'm not going to put it in the planter right away because I have to do some reorganization for that. But, uh, I can at least put it in the harvester to show you how easily they are to upgrade. So, each one of these adds a radius of six. Meaning, it doesn't just go six. It means it goes six more this way, and six more this way. Which, the harvester is in the exact location I want it to be in. However, the planter will need to move. But as you can see, it's got a slot here. I put this in, and we'll harvest 
a much larger radius, which also slows down its rate of catching up to some of these things. Because, like, you see, if I take this out, it finds that tree much quicker. So, and there everything goes. Do those not go where they're supposed to be? Did I ever put a filter? Oh, I did put a filter on that. I should probably resolve that. Three. Whitelist. Home solved. But, like I said, I can use saplings to make biofuel. Which, like, uh, MFR biofuel, not forestry, which I have removed. Because as we see, if I look up biofuel, well, I'm still in MFR anyhow, but... Uh, if you look up biofuel, all there is is the drum, the reactor, and you can see it also generates redstone flux. So, I could technically hook those directly to the system. I'm not sure how much they take, and actually creating the bio... The bio generator is not an issue, considering I have more blaze rods than I know what to do with now. Uh, yeah. Uh, as for apples, I'm not sure. I think does this... It doesn't say what all it takes. But it's also easy to make. But I've rambled on long enough. I'm going to get the planter and the harvester moved. I'll probably get barrels set up for it. So everything will have its own barrels, so that way I can stock up tons of resources. And then I will see you guys next time. Have a good day.